selecting our trade on the short, medium, or long term, or even just the triple EMA, we like to go through all of them to make sure we have confirmation of our trades. Now, looking at the short term crossover, it is supportive of the long position. The medium term has just crossed over. The medium term crossover from vantage point, a very powerful indicator. We're on a fresh cross to the upside here. So very good opportunity to buy on dips here in my opinion. Now the long term crossover does not surprise me that it is not completely supportive here. So that is something we have to keep in mind. Uh, certainly certainly uh, the picture is not as clear as what we would like it to be but it still looks pretty good. So from here we're going to put on our triple EMA crossover just like we did on the S&P 500. We can see that we've got a trending move up, but the triple EMA is still containing the market. 88.97, 88.37, and 88.44 with a close of 88.62. So we have somewhat of a mixed bag here. Now what we want to do here now is go into that daily report from vantage point. Very important that we can, uh, now that we've done our, our major analysis from the short, the medium, and the long term, and we're going to now go into that daily report to, to help us, you know, narrow down that, that entry point. So for tomorrow, we've got the neural index is still supportive up. We've got 88.91 is the high, not surprisingly, where the 18-day predicted moving average resides, and 88.29. Now, based on our short and our medium term indicators, uh, it's suggesting we want to buy on dips here. So 88.29 is the, is the area we're looking for a pullback. We can see that our predicted short and medium term differences are both positive and even our long term difference. This is what we're looking for. It was a negative 60. It's come down from negative 60 to negative 31. So it's given up half of its value. That's a very good indication that we want to, in this particular case, Build our, start building our long positions down in towards this 88.29 area and we, then we would like to see a break of the 18 day predicted moving average from vantage point in that 88.94 uh, area I believe that was I'm just going to pull that back up 88.97 excuse me so 88.97 is a critical level right now it's containing the market we can see uh, we've got a high today though of 89.16 so we've breached that critical resistance in that 88.97 area We've gone all the way up to the uh, 89.16 only for it to pull back and close at 88.62. Well, that's that's not a bad thing because, like I said, the market's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's not going to continue to just move in one direction. So on these pullbacks or on a move higher, we want to decide do we want to buy on the dip or do we want to sell into strength. That is basically what trading is. So in this particular case, we're, we're looking at those equity markets, we're looking at some of the other correlations, you know, and to further help illustrate that, what I'm going to do here for a moment, I'm going to pull this up so everybody can see this. I'm going to put the medium term crossover on here and I'm going to take off all of our other indicators. Now, by doing this, I'm going to put up the correlation and just show everybody what the correlation actually is between the S&P 500 and, these, uh, and the U.S.-Japan currency pair because there is actually a fairly uh, substantial correlation. So what we do here with the Vantage Point software, we put the U.S.-Japan currency pair on the bottom down here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the S&P 500 and put them side by side just to illustrate what kind of correlation we actually have here. Now looking at this, we can see the actual correlation and how powerful this correlation actually is between these two. Now this is why I have a trade in the futures market for your futures traders and the currency traders, but trading both of these at the same time could be a little dangerous and this is why. We can see that we've got the medium term crossover here on the S&P 500 and now a couple of days later we've got the medium term crossover on the US Japan. But if we look back through the history of these two we can see that the correlation is about 90% between the US Japan currency pair and the S&P 500. Again this is being used to illustrate the power of intermarket technical analysis instead of only looking at one market. Now to take this one step further what we, we can do is we can actually look at this in comparison to say for example the US dollar index. So if we pull up the US dollar index and we put it up against the US Japan currency pair we can also see there's a fairly substantial correlation here even though the, the US dollar here is actually on the left side of the currency pair. As the, the yen weakens, it actually the US dollar is actually able to gain strength against the yen in comparison to the index. So it's a very interesting thing. Now looking at the US Japan currency pair and light sweet crude oil, we can see that there's also uh, an unusual correlation here also. 
all the way going back we can see that this sell signal came on the US Japan currency pair right here and at the same time on light sweet crude oil uh, very very interesting correlations to look at and again the basis of intermarket technical analysis now if you have the US if you have the forex pairs on the, the vantage point software it's looking at all of these things but myself and in my years ex of experience in trading I pay a great deal of attention to this detail once using the program and I've been using the vantage point software for about seven years now you know it's it's opened my eyes to looking at what's going on in these other markets so those are the market positions for July the 13th 2010 and again my name is Greg Furman market analyst here at TraderPlanet.com